So now, there are some things that we have to remember about temptation. And when it comes to te overcoming temptation, there is not a one, two, three, four step formula that, you know, that everybody can follow. And that, you know, uh, this uh, pre preacher gets up and preaches and say, well, you know, follow these two, three formulas here and they'll overcome temptation. No, 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 no. But there are some things that we clearly must know and that we might, must put into consideration if we're going to be able to overcome temptation. Now, let's just examine a few, a few of them right now. Um, number one, we must resist temptation. Once again, we must resist temptation. And I want to share something with you out of the book of Genesis, um, talking about Joseph. And this is a classic example of um, resisting temptation. You know, in fact, the Bible says in the book of um, uh, James, again, he says to resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, let's look at, look at this. We can resist the devil, but there's some things that in us that we need to learn how to overcome. You know, we need to learn how to run from and learn how to resist. Now, the Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse number 6, so he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except the bread which he ate. And Joseph was, a handsome, was handsome in form and appearance. Now we're talking about Joseph, Joseph and his uh, master Potiphar. Now it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that, th that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Notice this. So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her, to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her, in her hand and fled and ran outside. And it was so. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called to the men of the house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought to us a Hebrew and to mock us. And he came in to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. Well, and you can read the rest of the story, how Potiphar's wife fabricated a whole entire story. Joseph was a just man. He was a righteous man. But notice something here. He resisted uh, Satan's temptation to be with Potiphar's wife. Now, the Bible says here, uh, as she spoke to him day by day, I mean, it probably grieved this woman and vexed this woman, you know, and she said, Joseph, lie with me. But the Bible says he did not. He would not do it. And the Bible says the thing that was so, so key in Joseph's mind is how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Notice, he was concerned about Potiphar. I'm quite sure he did say that. You know, my master has not kept anything away from me in this house except you because you are his wife. But the thing that was so, so uh, uh, branded in his mind, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? I'm telling you right now. Now, listen, let me tell you something. Think about it. What, new what church that Joseph had to go to in Egypt to find out that he was not supposed to sleep with another man's wife? No church at all. Didn't have no church back then. He didn't have a place. He, he was in Egypt. He was in a culture of people that were idol worshipers. So therefore, Joseph didn't have a preacher to preach to him about resisting temptation at all. But guess what he did? He resisted temptation. There was something on the inside of that young man, some type of moral fabric woven inside of him that allowed him to know that, listen, this is wrong. This is another man's wife, and I am not going to go behind his back and take his wife. I, and listen, I don't believe it was because he was afraid to go to jail. You know, there's some people today, they are afraid to commit crimes and things like that because they fear going to jail. But see, when you're born again, there's something on the inside of you that says, no, I'm not going to do that because God's commandment says that I'm not supposed to do that and I'm not going to do that. Now, notice something else. This will help the young people out. The Bible says he, he wouldn't even be with her. He wouldn't take heed to his, her words. Neither will he be with her. But one day he got caught in the house by himself with part of his wife. And guess what? She grabbed him by his clothing and said, lie with me, Joseph and he ran. Let me tell you something. Some things you got to stand against, some things you have to resist. 
But there are some things that you have to run away from. And in the scripture, the Bible is clear. In the book of Corinthians, he tells us to flee fornication. It's nothing, let me tell you, when it comes to sexual sin, that you can't, listen, the only way that you can resist it is run away from it. The guys may laugh on the block and say, man, you ran away from that, brother. You ran away from that, babe, man, what's wrong with you? And listen, it ain't got nothing to do with what's wrong with you. It's what's wrong with if you sin against God, even though the husband won't know or the boyfriend won't know or daddy may not know, but God knows and he keeps good records. And I'm telling you, the day of reckoning will come. So notice, Joseph resisted temptation. He resisted opportunity to be with, listen, with his, with his master's wife. So we got to understand, he went in his house to do the work. He had work to do. And she caught him, but he ran, left his garment in hand, and ran outside. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When it comes to sexual sins, the Bible says, can a man take hot iron, uh, hot coals rather, in his bosom and not get burned? That's something you can't play with. The Bible says if you commit fornication or sexual sins, you sin against your own body. And your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which belong to God. I know some of you saying, well, that's your opinion. No, it's the word of God. And if we're going to learn how to live a just and a righteous life before God in this life, we're going to have to learn to say no to temptation. Like they're teaching people to say, learn to say no to drugs. You got to say no to temptation to sin against God. Second thing is that we cannot entertain tantalizing questions. Or question that comes along. Listen, in Genesis chapter 3, something that messed Eve up, the Bible says in verse number 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Notice, has God said, casting doubt or some type of question in her mind as to get her to, to question what God really said or what did God really mean? Listen. Uh, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery is clear. You shall not do it. I know the word says adultery, but actually it's sexual sins. You shall not do it. And what part of that we don't understand? We, we go and question, well, well, does God mean that, you know, we're not to masturbate? Does that include the masturbation or, or does that include, you know, well, you know, I, I don't, we don't penetrate, but, you know, uh, 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 you know, we, we just fondle with one another. Come on, people. Sexual sin is sexual sin. You know, you, you got to understand, God meant what he said. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery or sexual sin. When he says, thou shalt not lust. Come on. I hear guys on the job all the time talking about, you know, well, you know, ain't nothing wrong with looking, but that's not what the Bible says. The scripture says Jesus told us and taught us, he said, if you even look at a woman and lust after, you've already committed sexual sin or adultery in your heart with her. So therefore, you're going to be punished for greater sin, understand? So we got to, what part of what thou shalt not steal, we don't understand. That means that if you've got paper clips on the job or whatever you decide, well, they're not going to miss this. And so you take a box of paper clips away from the, the job or you got a, a rim of paper or something like that from the job and you take it home to use it in your house. What part of thou shalt not steal, you don't understand? Well, God didn't really mean it. He's talking about major things like you should not rob or burglarize, all that. Come on, people. Let's be real. You cannot expect to resist temptation, entertaining tantalizing questions or questions that question what God said. Well, did God really mean this when he said it or did he mean something else? You know, did God really mean that marriages should be only between a man and a woman or should uh, between two people? Come on, people. The Bible tells us straightway what the Bible has to say and what God's, listen, let me tell you something about God. He means what he says and he says what he means. That's, that's just it. He means what he says and he says what he means. So therefore, don't allow the enemy to come in and, and put doubt and cast shadows in your mind. And don't let anybody else come and say, well, you know what? I, I know the Bible says that, but child, you got to get a, a deeper interpretation of what that, because, you know, it's so deep you can't understand. And we'll talk to you in just a few minutes as we go to our next part of this message, overcoming temptation. <laughs>